You're watching Talk Talk, presented by United Auto Sales. Where are you going to get it? Right here at Gamecock Talk Talk, the best breakdown of South Carolina football right here. Corey Miller, J.C. Sherwood, we've been talking about the offense. Nunez, Skonekia, Connor Mitch, Perry Oil, four quarterbacks, Perry was saying in the week, hey, I need to cut them down. I need to cut the depth chart down to two. And he's thinking about making an announcement this week on who's going to be the starting quarterback for the game. Cause you see Connor, Connor Mitch right there seems to be the favorite despite the two interceptions in the scrimmage, only 50% passing. Uh, Nunez was flawless, 44 yards. But I just don't see them going into North Carolina with a freshman quarterback, uh, first game of the year. I think you go with Connor Mitch. Uh, he's from North Carolina. He's got all kind of high school state records as a quarterback in North Carolina. You give him the ball and you say, Connor, this week, this is your game. This is your team. Take it and see how he handles it, J.C. Start him in the football game. And if he struggles, you got to have Nunez, Cornecchia, somebody ready to go, or even some packages for Nunez to get in there because I think you're going to see a lot of pressure out of North Carolina's game on these quarterbacks because they have zero experience. Yeah, I, I agree. I, if I'm Gene Chizik, I'm going to dial up some blitzes right. and try to you know, get in the face of whoever the starter is. Here's what I think, Corey. I would be shocked if it weren't Connor Mitch as the starter mm -hmm. w with a side of Nunez. Mitch with a sign of new side of Nunez. Yeah. That, that's what I think it's going to be. Uh, I think Connor certainly, from what I've been told, uh, you know, maybe not in the scrimmages statistically, mm -hmm. but during practice, it, it really hadn't even been close. Uh, from what I've been told, Connor Mitch has outplayed everybody else. He's more ready than everybody else. Nunez is the most talented quarterback on the roster, but he's not ready. Right. Uh, so you can't go throw him to the wolves right now. Right. Um, so I think you'll see Connor Mitch. I think it'll be his team. I think it should be announced anytime now. And, and I think that you'll see Nunez in the game and they'll work Nunez in more and more as the year goes on, provided something catastrophic doesn't happen. Now, if there's a catastrophic issue, we may be seeing the earthquake. <laughs> you know, I, I quickly. Think, yeah. I think because, again, you can't just throw Nunez out. There. Right. But if something happens, I think you're going to see this guy in the ball. Game. Here's Steve Spurrier's thoughts. We gave you ours, but here's what the HBC had to say. And all the quarterbacks did a lot of good things. You know, shoot, I wish one of them outplayed all the rest. But when you look at the stats over here, probably pretty similar. Well, most of the time they took the ball and threw it, threw it in there. And uh, most of the time our guys caught it. We only had a, a couple of drops and so forth. Uh, we, we missed a couple open guys, but uh, overall, I think they, they showed a lot of improvement. Hopefully, we'll, we'll, we'll find out something early this week, and somebody's got to go out the first time, so hopefully we'll, we can announce that this week sometime. That's going to be Connor Mitch. Now, we know who's going to go out at running back. That guy's going to be Brandon Wilds, who had a 70-yard touchdown run, and nobody could catch him. He's a senior. He's a guy that a lot of folks are saying, you know what, he's excited. He wants to prove the naysayers wrong about this football team, and he's thinking he's going to take this team on his back. You got a big back by the look of that picture, and they ready to run. Because we know if we run the ball, it's going to be hard to stop us. Uh, but our O-line and our backs, our O-line love to run the ball. So if we know we can run the ball, we know we get five yards. I know I got advice. I got help early uh, when I was a freshman. So uh, just trying to pass that down, uh, helping the young guys step up, just getting better. Because I know everybody needs help. Uh, it's the first time college game coming up in a professional stadium. So uh, it's going to be pretty nervous for them so just getting them nerves out just getting them prepared for game day well one thing you need is a great leadership no doubt about it, on the offensive side about ball and you like that to be a quarterback but in this case it is going to be Brandon Wiles who be, who's going to be the leader of the offense now switching gears to defense they didn't play well John Hoke said they didn't have the fire we mentioned that early and to me JC you got to have some fire that defensive line we're going to talk about it here later on in the program but this defensive line this defense overall got to have some some, some, I guess, hunger and thirst and want to get out to people, but they didn't have that in the scrimmage. Yeah, they didn't. And, and here's the thing, though. In, in college football, you know, you got to look at it like this, Corey. You know, and as a former player, you know this. You got 12 opportunities out of 365 days mm -hmm. a year to go out there and play football. Yep. It's not like other sports. How many games do they play in the NBA? 82 plus a year of playoffs. You know, Major League Baseball has 161 games. Football is not a sport that you play all the time because mm -hmm. it's tough on your body. Um, so it's hard for me to think that they won't be fired up and ready to go at the start of the North Carolina game. You know, my thing is, is if they get in that game, North Carolina has a very explosive offense, playmakers all over the field. 
maybe some things go wrong, how are they going to respond at that point? Can mm -hmm. they get back up off the mat? You don't want the ghost of last year coming in and, and wrecking you and making things worse than they already are. So I think it's important for them to get off to a good start uh, against the Tar Heels. Uh, but I think they will. I, I, I think this is going to be a good defense this year. Like I said, if it's fire issues, if it's passion issues, that has to be there. I think everybody knows that. I think it will be. Um, and it's much better to have those types of issues than like a, pa a talent issue yeah. or a, uh, you know, alignment issue or these guys don't know the scheme or they don't know the plays. Right. You know, that's a totally different mm -hmm. thing because passion, you know, can be turned on when you're dealing with 18-year-old college players. Well, here's uh, John Hope. He obviously has some passion. Here's what he had to say after the scrimmage. We didn't play with as much passion as we had in the other scrimmage. That was disappointing. Uh, there were some good things that we did do, but I think the overshadowing part was we just didn't have the, the passion that we've had uh, through camp and through the other scrimmages. You know, I, I don't ever worry about the offense. It's always about us and how we play, and that will never change. Yeah, I don't think you asked the defensive coordinator uh, a question about the offense. Just that, not just me. All right, when we come back, a couple guys got banged up in the scrimmage on news and notes. Our injury report with Brian Hand of Spurs and Feathers will join me after the break. You're watching Talk Talk, presented by United Auto Sales. And welcome back to Gamecock Chalk Talk. It is now time for our news and notes with our good friend Brian Hand of Spurs and Feathers. Brian, good to see you. And always looking dapper in the nice colored shirt there. I like the button down. I do what I can. Oh, yeah, yeah. You do real, real good. Yeah. Uh, the Gamecocks, we've been talking with JC through the program, mm -hmm. scrimmaged on Saturday because it was closed yeah. to yeah. the public. First, I'm going to ask you maybe why. I know Steve Spurs opened up one uh, scrimmage to mm -hmm. the public and to the media, but this time, uh, not so much. Is it because maybe we're getting close to, you know, lineups and, and depth chart and I want folks to see that or why do you think he closed the scrimmage? I think it's a little bit of both. Straight from his mouth it was that he says that we're going to start throwing in some of the things we're going to mm -hmm. do against North Carolina. So yeah, I think it is they're kind of starting to get some of that game plan in there and starting mm -hmm. to see. And I probably don't want to see how people are going to, I mean, how it's going to react on video and different things like that. So, you know, yeah, it is. They're starting to get ready. I mean, you know, I expect this weekend mm -hmm. probably won't let us in as well because they're getting... I mean, next week's game week. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, and, and, and it's a short week yeah, because short they week. play on Thursday, September mm -hmm. 3rd at Bank of America mm -hmm. Stadium. So it's now time, as we've been talking about, mm -hmm. we got to kind of clean up and start cutting the third and 14 mm -hmm. guys out, limiting their yeah. reps, and, and start really focusing on the first and second team, which mm -hmm. many at the quarterback position we've been talking about a lot. Yeah. Uh, it's probably going to be Connor Mitch and Nunez, or Skarnacki, whoever, yeah. whoever yeah. or we don't know yet. Whoever gets this spot. We know Connor yeah. Mitch is going to be one, and who, yeah. who, who's number two, we don't know. Mm -hmm. Now, after the scrimmage, uh, you know, there were some guys getting banged up. Mm -hmm. some guys that didn't even play. Yeah. Uh, talk about some of those guys. Uh, Go was a full screen right there. Yeah, yeah you see it. The, the biggest ones that step out and the ones that kind of got injured during the scrimmage are Kelsey Griffin and David Johnson. The reason that's important, they're both on the defensive line. So, you know, they, you know that's something they're trying to shore up <laughs> yeah. and that they need more depth. And that's an area that they got a lot of depth and they've been really excited about. John Hoke said after the scrimmage on Saturday that he wasn't necessarily excited with their enthusiasm as right. much as anything. So, you know, when you have guys out, Mm -hmm. It doesn't help that enthusiasm because you got more people trying to play more plays. And, you know, Antoine Wilder's been out for a while. Gage Pucci's been in and out of the rotation due to injury. Uh, you know, so, but the Camcocks, let's be honest, they've been pretty mm -hmm. lucky in this area so far during the preseason. No doubt about it. I mean, and that's what you try to get yeah. through camp is not getting key guys for yeah. sure hurt. Yeah. Guys, it's going to be your star. But right there, you see two defensive linemen yeah, yeah. Uh, that are on that, that injury list. Mm -hmm. that, and you're talking about really a lack of depth, I think at that position, and they're going to have to be good, they're gonna, mm -hmm. especially that first game against North Carolina when you're talking about yeah. the hurry-up offense and the speed that they're going to come in yeah. with. You're going to have to have some rotation of guys coming in and out of that lineup. Now, that being said, the AP polls we talked about came yeah. out early on today, and the first time since 2010, there isn't a sight of a Gamecock anywhere in this, this uh, top 25. I'm not laughing. It's, it's not funny. But it's, it's just surprising. It just shows where yeah. the program has gone since right. 2010. You know, I mean, a lot has been expected on this way. And after you have three straight 11-win season, people expect you to be in there, but they had a 7-6 and season. People, A lot of people out there expecting South Carolina to go back to being what 
the old South Carolina was. Obviously, Steve Spurrier mm -hmm. and the Gamecocks aren't those people, but you know these are what the prognosticators think about the Gamecocks so far. Well, but you got Tennessee's in yeah. there. I mean, they well, they, they won seven games. Seven games. That's the right so same record as South Carolina. But they're going to win the East. But they're going to win the East. That's Everybody what people are, are saying. prognosticating mm -hmm. that Tennessee will win this one based on they do have a lot of returners mm -hmm. uh, coming back. Uh, you, then you have Missouri, another team in mm -hmm. the East that's also in there, but you don't have Kentucky, Florida, Vanderbilt, South Carolina in the East. So there's not a whole lot of respect yeah. for this football team right now at the beginning of the season. Now, here's where I'm at. As I say all the time, it really doesn't matter mm -hmm. what preseason rankings say because last year South Carolina was in the top yeah. 25 and in the top 10. Top 10, yeah. And, and, and then they won seven games. So you really don't know where you stand. But when you're talking about this team, I think it's going to be critical, Brian, that they can stay healthy, mm -hmm. uh, especially defensive line, offensive line. And we and figure out what that quarterback. Now, Spurrier said this week. Now he's going to probably make an announcement. Yeah, sometime this week. I mean, like you said, I mean they're going to start game planning. It's really going into game week. What Thursday, Friday? Yeah. I mean, it's coming up soon this week. But you know, going back to what we were just talking about, they're not in the poll. But mm -hmm. what's Spurrier been saying? Kind of likes it. He likes, he kinda, he likes being, like being out of it. He likes, likes being the underdog. And I think the Gamecocks are kind of taking it. Well, if you flip the, if you flip the script, then it's going to work out better for them this season. Appreciate Brian Hand again. Follow him on Twitter at Spurs Feathers for all your news and notes and Gamecock all-around action. When we come back, we'll look at the matchup. It's the Battle of the Carolina Bank of America Stadium next well, week and Thursday. We'll say that. We'll break it down and look at that matchup after this break. <laughs> 